Hi, welcome to Books to Boardrooms with Dr. Kiran. Uh, today we have the pleasure of having Johanna. Uh, Johanna is working as an air traffic controller in UAE. As you know, that's only one percentage of applicants who apply for air traffic controller across the world gets enrolled into the program. And she's one among that one percentage. And on top of that, there are very few Emirati females in this profession. And she's one among that too. So it's, it's great to have her on our show. And let's try to understand what exactly is air traffic control, what are the key qualities, how she got in there, and what's her advice for the young Emiratis who aspire to be air traffic controllers. Uh, thank you, Johanna, for coming for the show. Thank you for having me. Can you just tell me a little background about yourself? Uh, so my name is Johanna al Meheri. I'm an air traffic control officer. Uh, for those of you that are wondering, since it's a relatively unknown field, uh, I'm basically like the Google Maps voice, but for pilots in the sky. I provide them with instructions to keep them safe uh, from other aircraft and any other obstructions. Um, I'm also a public speaker. I'm here today. I'm also an artist. I started my air traffic control training uh, when I was 19 years old. I finished at the age of 21 which made me in the facility to be the youngest woman to validate. That, that's good. So you work as an air traffic controller. Yes. So, and you are from UA, you are one of the few Emirati female air traffic controllers. Yes. What made you come into the field, which is dominated by males actually worldwide, 67 percentage of air traffic controllers are men and only 33 percentage is women. So what made you come to choose that, okay, I want to be an ATC? So I wanted to apply to as many scholarship programs as possible. I was a little lost after high school, and I just knew I wanted to be independent. I also realized as the eldest child, I had to financially provide for my mother and two sisters. So I applied to as many scholarships as I could find. Pilot, engineer, air traffic control was one of them as well, and air traffic control was the one to work out for me and uh, it's been a wonderful journey so far, but the main reason was for my mother and two younger sisters. I just kind of fell into it uh, because I applied for every scholarship I could find, and this is the one that just happened to work out. You know that the, the percentage of success when an applicant apply for an ATC worldwide is one percentage. Yes. So what, what do you think that you, know, you qualified in that one percentage to get enrolled into a similar program? I mean, I remember when I applied that the intake was to take six candidates. And at the time, for my specific batch, they only took two and I was one of them. So the percentage dropped down even lower and then they put me together with another batch that was already in the building. And uh, I think it's absolutely amazing. I, when I was in it during the training, I didn't realize the gravity of what I was doing. It's only after I validated and I started getting uh, people asking me questions about the job that I realized the accomplishment that I made. So what are the key functions of an air traffic controller? Uh, well, there are different things that you have to do. Is, uh, air traffic service is provided for the purpose of preventing collisions between aircraft on the maneuvering area between aircraft and other destructions. We also are expediting and maintaining the orderly flow of air traffic. Now to simplify these terms, as I had mentioned earlier, basically I'm the voice in a pilot's headset, kind of like a Google Maps, but live for air traffic and I provide them with instructions to keep them safe in the sky. I work with all the aircrafts that are already airborne, that are overflying the UAE, that are landing in the UAE, as well as departing from the country. So, because there's a lot of things in what you told right now, so what are the chief qualities a one as an individual I think that I should have before I pursue my career, or I want to become an air traffic controller. So is there any self-analysis that these are the qualities I need to have, apart from the subject knowledge? So I want you to touch base on the subject knowledge one should have to become a traffic controller as well as the key qualities an individual should have to be a, a traffic controller. So the key qualities, if you have the following, apply. Uh, communication, ability to concentrate for a long period of time. Your decision-making skills should be quick and decisive. You need to know exactly the kind of instruction you're giving and be 100% sure it is the correct one. Uh, you also need to be good at mental math, but just plus minus uh, multiplication division. Uh, you need to have organizational skills. 
uh, problem solving skills and also the ability to visualize in 2D and 3D. When you are driving a car, it's 2D. But now, imagine if the cars were above and below you. So 3D is also required for you to be able to visualize in order to keep uh, the skies of whichever country you are working in safe. You also need to be able to have the ability to adapt to change. So I work shifts. So I work a cycle of six days. So two morning shifts, two afternoon shifts, two night shifts. And for the entire duration of the shift, I need to be able to handle high stress situations. And it's just all about, in order to be able to separate aircraft safely at all hours of the day. Uh, imagine a surgeon, when they go to work, if they have uh, any issues, it's one person's life that is impacted. When you go to work as an air traffic controller, it's thousands to millions of lives per shift, depending on how busy it is. Okay, so you told about the stress or the importance of, uh, you know, how one can manage stress because this is one of the high stressful job. Yes. So tell me what you basically do to de-stress yourself because you need to have a very calm mind and a, in a very uh, in alarming scenarios too. So what basically you do to de-stress yourself? So in order for me to be able to cope with the stress, uh, the training program that you're put into is approximately three years. So you are equipped with all the knowledge you need in order to do this job well. And the selection process is tough. The training process is even tougher. So by the time you come through it, you know you are well qualified to do the job. So every time you go into work, there are new rules and regulations that come about. And you go in and you need to make sure that you are up to date with all the new procedures that are there. And that's one of the skills that I mentioned earlier. You need to be able to adapt to change. And these are the changes. So that is there. So knowledge is power make sure you know everything and that's how I ground myself and remind myself that this is that yes I can do the job because I have all the knowledge that needs to be done I just need to deal with the live traffic that comes towards me um, another thing would be uh, a personal proposition if at any point in time I realize that I'm feeling a little overwhelmed and which is natural to happen uh, my coping mechanism is all right the, the planes are already in the sky Aircrafts do not go in reverse once they've departed, so get yourself together and get it done. Um, this is why they have selected you in the first place, and you have to, I take pride in being able to uh, serve my nation by keeping the sky safe. So you just, you do it. It's, fight, it's an adrenaline rush in the best way, and you just get the job done. Um, outside of work, I have different things. I do gardening, I've got so many dogs, <laughs> you know, just going home to them, that in itself when they run to me, stress relief. Um, what else? Uh, I've taken up dirt biking. So there's different activities that I like to do. So when I do leave the building, it's totally like de-stressing. But uh, also one of the things that's great about air traffic control is we wear a headset when we go to work. And the minute that headset comes off, even if you haven't left the room yet, you have already clicked off and compartmentalized that session and you can just clean slate for the next one, which is the best part of the job actually. So it's more to do with you and yourself and how you fine tune your mind, which will help you to come out of the scenarios. Yeah, but I feel like most controllers are quite similar in terms of personality. So the minute you go on break, you're like busy stressing about whichever traffic situation while you're working it and handling it well and then you go on break and your biggest concern is oh did i heat up the pizza enough you know like <laughs> that's okay. that's it so it's easy to do that switch i think that over time you learn how to do that what is the career progression of an air traffic controller you apply to be an air traffic controller at the beginning uh, with the way that my training was conducted i worked as an assistant for a few months as an air traffic control assistant and then i went and continued my training in the united kingdom uh, for a few months, I came back to Abu Dhabi, my training continued over there, and I validated, validate means graduate in aviation terminology as an air traffic controller, and now it's been about uh, five to six years that I've been working solo with no instructor by my side, and uh, after that, uh, you can, after a few years have passed, you can be an on-the-job training instructor, which is what I'm doing right now. And I'm training the next generation of controllers, which I love. I love, I love to teach. Um, and then after that, or a lot, around the same time, you can also apply to be the supervisor of the shift. Um, and then the hierarchy goes on. There's definitely scope for growth, and you can continue to grow depending on the type of organization that you're in, in terms of where you would grow in that organization. 
So if, if any one of the students who are listening to this interview, if they want to really take ATC, air traffic controller as a career, yeah. so what are the, how can they do it in UAE? Do you have any specific colleges where these students can apply and get enrolled and be an air traffic controller? So in the UAE, uh, the way that uh, I had applied was through scholarship, as I had mentioned. So as an Emirati, you can apply by uh, uh, applying to different uh, organizations. So I work for the General Civil Aviation Authority. They have a website and a page where you can apply to do air traffic control training uh, as part of their amortization scheme. The same goes with Dubai. They have their own air navigation service. There's also a few private ones as well where you can apply and then you go through the training program where you will uh, most likely get paid while you're training and after you validate you get your pay rise as a full air traffic controller with a full air traffic controller salary. So it's just a matter of applying to those programs. Uh, for the expat community, you have to get in there with uh, a few years of experience first. I'm not sure how long. It depends on which organization you're applying to, which have different requirements. OK, so what is one advice you want to give to all the young Emirati females who want to ask pair or you want them to come to ATC as a career, so what will be your advice to them? I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It will be tough, but it's not going to be tough because you're a woman. It's going to be tough because it's tough for everybody. As you mentioned the statistic earlier, 1% of the entire population in the world is capable and have made it as air traffic controllers, and there's a reason for that. It is not an easy journey. And uh, as I mentioned before, a surgeon goes to work, one life is impacted, positive or negative. You go to work as an air traffic controller, thousands if not millions of lives are impacted. So it's a big responsibility on your shoulders. And for the Emirati girls that are out there, you should take it, you should understand that it's not an easy job, but it's definitely worth it. You know, um, without leave, I only work 18 days a month. So you, should you choose, you can have a wonderful work-life balance and have your family you know, 12 days of the month, you have the ability to be able to stay home working full time as ATC because of the uh, requirements to give you the time off. As we mentioned stress, f I believe for each two days you work, you have to have one day off. So that's kind of how the numbers work out uh, internationally. So definitely apply. Uh, it gives you a lot of financial stability and security as well. So you can uh, financially provide for your family. I, I know it's a, a uh, slightly goes against the cultural norms where as the girl of the house I had to take care of my family but the air traffic control and making it through enabled me to be able to help my mother to help my sisters to help them finish their education so it'll give you independence uh, if you like to travel and everything else with that financial stability and the extra time you can travel the world which is what I had done for a few years after I validated so it's a fantastic opportunity should you choose to pursue it but definitely keep in mind, it's not an easy one. So if you choose to pursue it, you have to give not 100%, 120 minimum to be able to make it through. Thanks, Dehena, for giving such a wonderful insight. I'm sure uh, those who are watching this interview, especially Emiratis, it will be a big inspiration for them to take this as a new career because nowadays a lot of jobs are getting replaced by technology and robotics. So that this is something which really they would like to take it and you know we have that uh, financial and uh, professional freedom and independence. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot for taking your time and coming for this particular uh, interview. Sure. And I wish you all the very best in the future. And you too. Thank you.